All right, guys, welcome back. This is Dave with Alum House. This is going to be our second video in, in this series, and we are teaching sound technicians how to practice at home. The two biggest tools that you're going to want to know how to use are going to be compression and EQ. EQ is going to help you kind of craft the sound and find specific uh, frequency bands for your instruments to kind of live in. Compression is going to help control the dynamic contrast of each specific instrument and maybe even on your main bus, your, your mix channel. And so when we look at waveforms, I'm gonna zoom in and to do that, I'm gonna come down to the bottom right way over here, not the, very, I guess the middle, right? And this over here allows us to zoom in. So we can start to zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And if we come down and look at the vocal, I'm actually gonna use this little window right here. If I click on that, I can make it extra large and we can see that one word is loud. The next word is not quite as loud. Then we've got some trailing off parts and then it's kind of loud again. So we are dynamic in how we play and how we sing. We're going to use a compressor to start to even that out. It's going to make the softer parts a little louder and the louder parts a little softer. So let's dive in and see how we do that. First, I'm going to Take this back to normal size, there we go. And if we use this little window here on the left-hand side, the small to large, this is gonna pop up some stuff above our, uh, above our each, each track. And I can even drag this a little further up to give us more real estate. Now on your sound console, if you have an old analog console, you might have one knob at the top that says compressor and then underneath it, a slew of knobs uh, and maybe some buttons for EQing. If you're on a digital console, you're probably going to select each channel and then you're going to have, uh, you know, the various tools available of EQ and compressor, which are going to uh, have different knobs that you're going to use to interact with that one channel. Here, we actually uh, use them as inserts. And so what I'm gonna do is just click on this little, uh, the little plus, and I'm going to then click on personas, and now I can find channel strip. And so channel strip is right here. I'm actually gonna click and drag, and this is just duplicating a blank channel strip on each instrument. In the old days, you actually had to had an insert channel on your analog console and you would stick a cable in it and you would run that cable out to, let's say, a compressor and it would interact with the compressor and then come back in. And if you wanted to add an EQ, you had to daisy chain an EQ, all this outboard gear. So when we live now in the luxury of the digital environment, we end up with, uh, with all this stuff built in, but that's why they're called insert effects. So if I open up this channel strip, I'm gonna double click on it. And what we're going to get is this window here. And so we have a couple things right at our fingertips. This first one is a low cut. If we click on that, you can visually see on the right hand side what's happening. This is cutting out the lower frequencies that are coming through that instrument. Most of my instruments are gonna get a low cut of anywhere from 100 to 150 uh, hertz. And then on my low stuff, like we're on a kick drum right now, I'm actually gonna set this at about 35. That's just, okay, so 40 is the lowest it'll go. And that's gonna cut out the low rumble that's gonna be kind of obnoxious. Uh, the next thing we have is a one knob compressor. So if you are on an analog console, this is very similar to what we're doing here. Uh, we can click and we can adjust this up and we can adjust it down. We will see what it's doing in a minute. Uh, we're not gonna deal with the expander feature, but we do have a fast, medium, and slow attack. Most of our instruments, we're gonna stick with medium, except for our drums. We're gonna hit fast attack uh, for our compressor because the drum, we need to compress right when it hits. And if you wait too long, you're gonna miss out on some of those inconsistencies of our drummers. The next thing on the far right, we have an EQ. We have a three band EQ, you see low, mid and high. And those six knobs are going to tell us what frequency and how much we're boosting or lowering. 
And what we have is the actual ability to just kind of engage with it here by clicking and dragging. So when I move this up, you can see on the right hand side, the mid was adjusted and it's found the frequency that I'm at. If we watch the frequency, I'll just slide to the right. Frequency goes up and down, okay? And so we can do that with all three of these bands. We can boost, we can cut, okay? This one is a, a shelf, so we can boost and cut as well. And then if we've compressed, which has made things softer, and let's say we've done a bunch of EQ cuts uh, or boosts, we can adjust the gain of this overall channel over here. And so let's get into doing a little bit of this. We'll start with our kick drum. So I'm actually going to bring this down here a little bit. I'm going to scroll up, find my kick drum channel and make it really big. I'm actually going to minimize this on the right hand side so that we get more of the song in our viewable window. And for ease of what we're doing, I'm going to come up here. This is a left button, click and drag, make this loop a little longer. I right click and hit loop active. And now it's just going to loop in this spot, keeping repeating, and we can make some adjustments and see what it does. So first thing I'm going to do is use this low cut. I'm just going to hit play and listen to what happens as I make these changes. Uh, I'm actually going to solo this. If you see these buttons, M is for mute. S is for solo. When I hit solo, you see how it automatically mutes all the other channels. So all we're going to hear is this kick drum right now. Let's hit play and hear what we got. Automatically, you can hear that we've got a lot of other things in this mic outside of just a kick drum. When you have four, five, six mics on a drum set, those mics are picking up everything. But here we go. We're going to cut out the bottom part. So it no longer sounds like a kick drum, and this is the kick drum channel. So let's bring that back down to where it was at 40. Let's see what the compressor does. It's made it a lot punchier. Let me hit fast. Hear how it's super punchy. This red light clicks on when it starts to compress. I'm going to back it down until it's just hitting that red. See how the red is barely coming on? All right, let's go to EQ now. Typically, we're going to find some bad frequencies in a kick drum. So I'm going to boost this middle one as much as I can. It's going to get really nasally. I'm going to sweep from left to right and find the horrible frequency. I want to make it sound super bad. Let's go up to the right. All right. So I think that right there is pretty bad. Now I'm going to come and just use this volume knob here. And I'm going to adjust it down about nine decibels. Now what I can do is, because it's taking out some of the low end that I actually want, I can take this one and maybe boost it a little bit. Not too much, maybe only two decibels here. All right, so I'm going to, up here in the right, uh, sorry, the top left, I can hit the bypass button. This will bypass all the changes we've done and hear what we started with. So to me, it sounds a little papery without everything and it doesn't have a whole lot of punch. When I turn it back on, now we have a kick drum coming through low end. We still have the top end attack. So we're gonna leave that alone for right now and see what we get with the next one. I'm going to hit the stop button. I'm going to unsolo that, and now I will solo the snare drum. And so I'm just going to go track by track and start to mess with the settings. Uh, when I do EQing, so I'll double click this channel strip. I'll bring this channel strip up here, and we'll start to mess with 
what we can see here. Uh, my EQing, I call the quick and dirty EQ. I quickly want to make it sound dirty, finding the bad frequencies, and then I just use the volume knob of my EQ to remove them. So let's get started here on the snare drum. The snare drum actually sounds pretty good right now. Let's hit the low cut and see what see if we can clean up some of the low end. All right, so that's taken out a lot of the body of the drum, so we'll bring it back down. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna hit fast on the compressor and start to turn this compressor up and see what we get. So that red light started to blink at about 50%. All right, let's see if we can find some bad frequencies on our EQ. Again, I'm just gonna grab this mid, I'm gonna boost it all the way, and I'm gonna sweep to the left until it sounds horrible. So that, that right there is almost 600 hertz. Now I'm gonna use this to bring it down. So about minus six, if I, minus six dB. And let's see if we can boost the top end to get a little bit more sizzle out of this drum. See how I've boosted it way, way up and it's 12 decibels of boost, which is way too much, but I want to find the good spot of the drum. That seems to be a good spot of the drum. Now I'm gonna bring it down to something that's tasteful. All right, and let's hit the bypass and see what we've started with and where we are now. Hear how much low end we have in that drum? All right, let's turn it back on. All right, let's keep moving. Now the next thing that I like to move to is actually not the toms, but the overheads. The overheads are going to be catching a full frequency of the whole drum kit, like a, an overview of the whole drum set. And so what I'm going to do is hit the channel strip here on my overhead left. Let me scroll down in this window so that we can see the overhead. All right. I'm going to solo overhead left. And again, just hit play and start going with this. Now, if we cut out too much of the lower frequencies, we'll miss out on some of the depth of the toms that we get right off of the heads of the toms. But at the same time, we don't wanna have necessarily the snare drum and the kick drum ringing through all of these extra mics. So let's just, uh, let's go ahead and hit play and see what we get here. So here how it gets really thin. Now these are typically going to be picking up cymbals, but we want some of the body of those drums back in this. So that seems about right, 120. Maybe 106 right there. Now I don't want to compress these quite as much. Let me turn this volume down some. I don't want to compress these quite as much, so I'm just going to leave it on medium and pull it up until I see that red light start to blink some. There we go. All right, let's do the quick and dirty EQ. Catch this mid, drag it up, make it sound horrible. Bring it down. And maybe only minus three on this one. It's not quite as aggressive. Now these are hi-hats and cymbals and stuff from the drums. So we're gonna boost this top a little bit. Let's find a good frequency. Maybe right about here. Let's bring this down. So it's only about two decibels of boost. All right, let's 
bypass. And then turn it back on. So what we're really gonna hear the difference is cleaning up this low end by removing, you know, a kick drum frequencies out of this overhead mic and also some of these mid frequencies that are just kind of nasally in their sound. So um, what I'm gonna do is cheat. <laughs> I'm going to take this from overhead left. I'm going to go up to overhead right. I'm going to right click and I'm going to remove. And I'm just going to copy that uh, that plugin from the left overhead to the right overhead. And let's play these two together and see what it sounds like here. Turn this back up here. Now, one of the things I can do, too, is take these and actually pan them to make them sound very wide. So overhead left, I'll just click and drag here to the far left and the right to the far right. And now we get to start getting a stereo image of that drum kit. So the next thing we can do is actually bring up the just unmute the kick and the snare drum and just see what it sounds like with those added in. So here we go. And I can even unmute the toms. But do you see? <laughs> Those toms start to get pretty pingy. So let's stop there. And we can adjust these toms. Let's see here. I'm going to click this S that's just above here. That kind of clears out everything. And now the tom one, I'll hit solo and we'll bring up the channel strip and we'll start with Tom one and just see what we can get. It's mostly gonna be cleaning up again, the low frequencies and the, uh, the mid range a bit. Uh, we don't necessarily have to deal with compression a little bit, but since we're here and we've got it available, we can do that. Let's see. That frequency is ringing pretty bad. But listen to that, that almost feeds back. Let's use that frequency and let's bring this down here. There's another frequency in there too, but I don't know if I've got the ability to mess with it with this, just this EQ here. So I think if I take that, let's try and boost and see what if we boost the bottom end. Now that makes it worse. You hear that? That one frequency kind of ringing out in there. I don't want to cut too much. I still need it to sound like a drum. All right, let's bypass and see what it sounded like. And now back on. So it's a bit more controlled. We'll go with that for just a second and see what we get with Tom 2. So I'm gonna hit the solo button here on Tom 2, channel strip, low cut. So that's really thin because we went way too far. All right, let's try our compressor. mid-range here on the EQ. So there's a lot of hollow frequencies on this drum. Ooh, did you see that compressor kick in right there when they hit those big frequent, that really hard hit right here? So I want to loosen this compressor up just a touch here and click that. 
All right, I'm going to stop this. And what I'm going to do is unsolo. Now, I'm just going to solo the, all of the drums. Kick, snare, tom one, tom two, overhead left and overhead right. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of these at the same time. So shift and click. And I'm going to bring all of these faders down some, all the way to the bottom. And what I'm going to do is just start with the overheads. I'm going to I'm going to hit play, bring the overheads up. So I'll select both of those, bring those up, pretty much back to zero. All right, now I'm going to add in kick drum. Snare. Let's do snare overly boosted here. A lot of snare drum. I'll bring it back down here. And zero is gonna be pretty good. Let's bring up our tom one. And tom two. You're gonna start to just hear the rumble of the toms kind of added in as we boost, as we bring up the faders for the toms. All right, last thing I'm gonna do is pan my toms a little bit left and right. So rack tom is a little bit to the right, floor tom is a little bit to the left. This lines up with our overhead as well. And it'll start to give more of a stereo image of that kit. All right, I'm gonna stop that. I'm gonna leave those there. And I'm gonna take a pause here. We've got drums set up. I'm gonna go on and we'll do guitars and vocals in the next video. So, uh, at this point, we've got drums kind of mixed down. We've talked about the quick and dirty EQ. We've talked about the compressor on this. Obviously, uh, many of the digital boards are gonna have a lot more features uh, than what this channel strip has, but this is a, a way to get started and practice doing a mix. So uh, in the next video, again, we'll talk about the same stuff, but on the guitars and the vocals, and we'll actually start to build a complete mix of this entire band. So thanks for watching. We will catch you in the next video.